I've heard it said mm -hmm. that how long does it take to be a Christian? A moment and a lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's a lifetime of just being surrendered and listening and mm -hmm. walking in the direction He leads. Mm -hmm. And that's a lesson we're all learning. I think we have a big word for that, right? Sanctification yeah. or something? <laughs> something like that. It just never ends, yeah. does it? Yeah. Yeah. Bridget, it's your turn. Okay. Well, I think just listening to what you guys were saying, I think for me this year, it's definitely about relationship. Um, I gave my life to Christ when I was 10 years old, and that was as a direct result of my father giving his life to Christ, just seeing how much he changed and how it changed him as, just as a, as a man, as a father, as a husband. And, um, and it was interesting because, you know, I think I got it. I really got it at that point in time. But then gradually, you know, as you move into your teen years, you know, I'm sure some of us seasoned Christians oh. know that <laughs> the Jesus. teen years, oh, sorry, guys. She always likes to remind Yes, yes, that's true. But she's the most holy, so. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, sometimes when you go through your teenage years, you know, you start to, to drift away and, and things like that. And, you know, it wasn't necessarily a drifting away, but like one moment that really sort of hit me that, you know, I know God, but I don't have a relationship with God was, I think I, you know, maybe 19, 20 years old and I was like having my own personal prayer time and you know I was praying with my mouth but my mind was somewhere completely different and when I clicked back in I realized that I was praying the same prayer that I used to pray over food mm. you know and I was like what is going on mm -hmm. you know and that's when it really clicked to me that you know I don't have a relationship with Christ I don't know him mm -hmm. he doesn't know me you know mm -hmm. I'm praying with yeah. to him in this with what I pray over food like yeah. that's ridiculous you know, and so it really sort of, you know, and I was going through my own issues in terms of, you know, just feeling, it was funny because people would always say, oh, you know, you find Christ, you find Christ and you're free. But, you know, because of sometimes having to deal with legalism and among Christians and among churches and stuff, I never felt like Christ was freedom for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then and then I had a conversation with one of my friends, um, for now, and she said to me, you know, you need to throw away this, this praying with thou and thus and so on and so forth. You know, <laughs> pray to God like you would pray to me, yeah. you know? So, you know, if you don't like Sally, God, mm -hmm. I do not like Sally. <laughs> you need to work something out with me because I mm -hmm. don't like Sally. Yeah. You know, yeah. God, I feel like lying. I feel like stealing. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know, mm -hmm. whatever the situation is, talk to God like that. And that really sort of helped me to realize that, you know, God's my friend, God's my, my mm -hmm. father. You know, Jesus Christ mm -hmm. died for a reason. Not that I can sit there and say, oh, thou and thus and all, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. And I've got to a point in the past year where I fully realized, like, just how free I am. Like, I think mm -hmm. I was driving in the car the other day and I was thinking to myself, like, you know, if I got into a car accident, and this is morbid, I know, but <laughs> I was thinking to myself. <laughs> Not after this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. If I got into a car accident, you know, like, I, like. I'm not worried. Yeah. I'm not worried at all. You know, like I finally feel like I'm free because I've been able to sort of mm -hmm. clue in and say to myself, okay, God already knows who you are. He's, he knew who you were from day one. So what is the point in, in being fake and phony mm -hmm. with him? Right. That's Bridget, you mean if you died, you're not worried. Oh no, if I died, I'm not worried. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Like if I died, yeah. you know, we're talking about the resurrection and then, you <laughs> yeah. know, mm -hmm. if I died, I would not be worried at all because you know, God loves me mm -hmm. and he loves me for who I am with my flaws, with, Absolutely. you know, my meanness, my stubbornness, yeah. my selfishness. He loves me. So what's the point? And so it moves beyond below the surface, below mm -hmm. the shallow mm -hmm. surface into yeah. the depths of relationship. Denise. Yeah. What about no, you? It, it kind of goes with, with that, Bridget. Like, and I love how you say just being real with God. And that's the journey I've been on too. And um, just being real with who I am and and understanding how I'm made and, and how he loves me. It, I think that's like been the hardest thing is because I so many times, like I just want to do things for God. I just want to strive. I just want to perform. I just want to achieve. And that's kind of been the MO my whole life. And I think God has really taken me out of that. Um, thank God he did that because <laughs> I really, because I, I find I'm more at peace now. And I think that's probably been the biggest gift of this last year is just being more at peace with who I am and that I'm not defined by how the world defines me. And I, I can remember, I think, having a call, phone conversation with Cheryl once and saying, okay, I'm not a mother. I'm not, you know, a wife. I'm not, you know, this and this and this and all these different things. So what am I? And then she's like, well, do you want me to say it? And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm a daughter. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all are. Every single one that's of right. us on this couch is a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I don't need the world to define me by what I'm doing or by what I am. Mm -hmm. But it's by that very foundational thing that unless I'm a daughter, I really Really, I don't have a relationship with him mm -hmm. unless I come as a daughter, unless I actually live as a daughter with him. 
that relationship has very, it, it becomes more of a religion. It, it needs yeah, to have right. that really vital trust mm -hmm. and love of God. And I'm still not there yet. I mean, mm -hmm. I still want to love him so much more than I do mm -hmm. right now and realize the love he has for me much more than I do right now. But I, at least I know above all, I'm a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's a great starting yeah. place. Yeah. And in well, that father-daughter thing, what's so great about it is that you're not um, like adopt, well, you're adopted, but the, his idealized father is that you belong. Like yeah. you're never mm -hmm. gonna be rejected. Yeah. You are part of the family. Yeah. You don't family, have to earn, right. you're born, when, you, when you are a part of a family, you don't have to earn it. You are part of that family. Mm -hmm. It's a fact and mm -hmm. you're loved just because you belong to the family, mm -hmm. yeah, in a right. sense, right? Not because yeah. you got an A on your test or a D yeah. or mm -hmm. you behaved good or you didn't behave yeah. good. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's something about it that is, you know, not in some of the, you know, families that we've experienced, mm -hmm. some of us, mm -hmm. but in that ideal, there's something mm -hmm. about it that is so secure. And all yeah. the work needed to make you a princess, girls, let's enjoy it, <laughs> a daughter of the king, a royal, was done at Calvary, was yeah. done mm -hmm. on that cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything to be a daughter, mm -hmm. that it was just totally, it's a total, total gift. And just letting him father you and just letting yourself be vulnerable with him and just mm -hmm. let him fill those spaces in your life that you're looking maybe to other people to fill. Mm -hmm. And you will be surprised what happens. I think so. that's called a savior. Sorry. No, it is a savior, but I think it's also the gift. Like, it's that receiving. It's funny how sometimes we struggle just to receive this free love, mm -hmm. this free fathering, this mm -hmm. free family given. And mm -hmm. I think it's, a, it's such yeah. a great, encouraging point. Go, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, fighting um, this past weekend, actually, I was uh, in church, and uh, pa a pastor at my uh, church was saying how, you know, everybody has like this built in, he calls it a savior search, you know, and he's mm -hmm. like, everybody has a savior search. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for some people, it's relationships with men or women. For some people, it's drugs and alcohol. For some people, it's whatever vice you can name out there. But at the end of the day, what it boils down to is a savior search. So, mm -hmm. you know, why not go through to the true savior, That's as opposed right. to everything else yeah. that mm -hmm. still leaves you void at that, the end of the day. That is mm -hmm. the best message we could get across, especially right now yeah. on Good Friday. Melinda. Well, that's a good segue. I think, you know, I was doing a bit of inventory, princesses, um, <laughs> the, about my year. And, you know, it's been, a, it's been a, quite a full year. There's been a lot of disappointments. There's been stresses. There's been joy. There's been sadness. There's been regrets. And so I was kind of, I was, I was, I was sort of doing an inventory. And I was thinking, what have what has Jesus done in my life? What how has my relationship been with him? And if I could rate it, you know, even as a Christian all my life, a missionary kid, mm -hmm. someone who's grown up in church, has learned memory verses, knows all the nice worship songs and the Christian <laughs> cliches, I rated myself not that high. I kind of was a little disappointed in my relationship with Christ. And here's the reason, I think Bridget, you touched on it. It's every single one of us, even myself, has this this hole in my heart for God. And all of us fill it with different gods, whether it's success, mm -hmm. riches, performance, perfection, control, relationships, sex, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. And I found that as I've been thinking about my year, even myself, I've tried to fill my life with other things and not God. Mm -hmm. even, even church, even community. Mm -hmm. And I focused my eyes on things that are tangible and things that I think can, can fill my soul and make me happy and at peace and they don't. And so I, I, I believe that God and, you know, and is, is been sort of wooing me back to say, Melinda, number one priority. As you work on the priority to build your relationship with Peter and you need that time with him, that's the kind of time you need with me. Because look what happens. Every time you are at your lowest, you're the most depressed, you're anxious, it's because you have, you've been away from me. You've, you've had other lovers to say, that have filled your time and not me. And so when you cry out to me every time, if you actually look back, Melinda, at all those crises, it's in your doing. You've chosen that and not chosen me. And so I've been thinking a lot about that going, you know what, I need to get back to choosing him. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make the decision to follow mm -hmm. Jesus, but you have to choose every day mm -hmm. to be with him, to get to know him, to read the scriptures, to talk like Bridget, hey, I don't like Sally, and talk <laughs> <to> <laughs>